So one of the things I do on my Sabbath Sunday is I try to eat really well. So I have a grape leaf off my grapevines. I have a nice ripe Florida Prince peach off the peach tree. And I have a kumquat off the kumquat tree. I love the kumquat. And then I try to do some active but fun things. So one thing I do is I like to hit golf balls and baseballs in my hitting net here. And uh, I might just do about 20 just to kind of have some fun, keep my body nice and loose. And I'm doing this as a warm-up before I go and uh, plant a new raised bed garden today. Sorry. Perfect. Perfect. Last one. Oh. So I love doing active things like baseball, golf, different things that allow me to have fun are different than my norm, which my norm is Kung Fu, yoga, fitness, Qigong, and Tai Chi. And uh, it just lets my mind be a nice positive place plus my body doesn't stiffen up by sitting on the couch all day on a beautiful 70 degree Phoenix day. So now I want to show you guys one of my second hobbies that I love to do on my Sabbath Sunday for active rest which is gardening. Let's go check out how I garden. So this is going to be how I kind of get my active rest today. I'm going to take this dead zone kind of back here where my dogs have their nice little home, their little kennel. My rabbit chubs is back there in the corner, if you guys can see them in the back left. And our little uh, our beehive where we keep some bees so they can pollinate and make honey. We're going to put a raised bed right here at the edge of the cage and we're going to grow some loofah and other climbing vegetables up this uh, edge of the, of the cage. So without further ado, let's get started and I'll see you guys back here at the end of the job. Building raised beds in an edible garden is very therapeutic, but it's also a great training exercise for the martial artist and also the athlete because what it helps you to do is it helps you to visualize something that you have in your mind that you want to complete. See it in your mind, look at where you want it, and then do it. And it's a great exercise in visualization. So right now I'm gonna stand up and visualize what I want. Can you guys see it? I can see it. Now let's go do it.
Okay, so that is pretty much an hour of my time building a nice long raised bed about a foot or a foot and a half wide and I would say one, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> I would say about six paces, so about 18, 20 feet long. And in this raised bed, I'm going to put uh, loofa, these new uh, wild loofa, they're circular loofa. We're gonna also put some Armenian cucumbers, which are really good for the hot weather. We're gonna put some regular loofa from my seeds from last year and some uh, Malabar spinach, which is a hot weather variety of spinach that we grew last year as well. And it's a great climbing spinach that can take the full heat and it's delicious. Kind of has a succulent kind of uh, feel in your mouth. So I'm gonna get to planting these seeds. I hope you guys enjoyed my raised bed. But now, once I plant these seeds, I'm going to the front yard to do something else on my Sabbath Sunday. And after the next activity, we'll be doing a question and answer uh, where I'll answer some of your YouTube questions. So stay tuned. And I know that some of you will be wondering what I put in the soil. So I basically put uh, you know, 80%, 75% compost in the soil. But I use this kind of compost I either go down to the company directly, which is down in Phoenix. They're called Western Organics. And they put out an organic potting soil that they call the premium potting mix down at Western Organics or Grow Well. And, um, but they have this at my local Lowe's, which is only $4 for two and a half cubic feet of soil. So it's like this whole bed cost me about $10 to fill. So then I also put usually coconut core as an amendment, but I just happen to have some peat moss laying around. I normally use coconut core, I just buy it by the block on eBay. But I use this peat moss because I had it around. And uh, one of my other keys is I put in this uh, rock dust called azomite. It's over 70 different minerals, trace elements in a rock dust form. It's in little pellets, but then they dissolve into powder when you put water on it. And this gives minerals and um, different trace elements back to the roots of the plants and thus makes my vegetables more healthy. So that's kind of what I put in my beds. I also usually put in some of my own compost for my compost tumblers. And uh, I normally amend some of that in as well. And if you guys want to see what I was doing here, this is how the new raised bed looks from the side. So my main garden center is right there. And this new raised bed stretches across and stops at the dog kennel. And so I'm going to put some nice trellising up the sides and my loofah, my cucumbers, and my Malabar spinach will climb up this trellis out of the raised bed. It'll be perfect. So in addition to the raised bed today, this is my front yard here, I planted three new trees. I planted these two mango trees last week and uh, this one is called a Bailey's Marvel Mango and this one is called a Coconut Cream Mango and look at all this new growth on top looking great. I got these from Seamus O'Leary's Tropical Trees and all this new brown growth on top is the new growth. We also planted the cinnamon uh, bush behind here. We'll see if that works. And uh, we got these moringa trees that look fantastic. They're in their second year now and they're coming along really well. We have four of them. And these moringa trees, Google search moringa tree. It's the, one of the healthiest foods on the planet. But the three trees that I planted today are next to my apricot and my navel orange. This is one of them I just got finished planting. It's called a guamuchil tree. We have one of these in the back and they're doing pretty well so far and they apparently give off edible bean pods like tamarind and you eat the white fleshy part on the inside of the bean pod. So it's called a guamuchil. Guamuchil tree, these were at Lowe's. Then uh, I got this one. This is called a Chinese date tree or a jujube. And this one is the long variety. We have two others. In the back, one is a contorted and one is a Lee. And the uh, contorted one, one was from Baker Nursery. It's doing great. The Lee was from Whitfield Nursery and this one was from Lowe's. <laughs> so it's a long jujube, Chinese date. And then this one, 
It's another fig because my favorite fruit on the planet is figs. And this one is called a Texas Blue Giant Fig. And we're planting this one in the front. So this Texas Blue Giant Fig is next to our Santa Rosa Plum on the right and next to the Loquat on the left with a Long on Dragon Eye tree in the middle and a starfruit tree on the left. And so this way we'll eventually have a nice little archway and gate here and pathway that will lead through our house past the loquat, past the starfruit, past the amazing moringas. And when you get into the middle of the moringas at the foot of the saguaro, you can like look up and see how amazing these moringa trees are. I planted them last year. They were six inches tall. Now they're they'll get over 20 feet this year and right up through here to our front yard through our passion vines which are going pretty strong up on top. All right guys, let's uh, get to our question and answer for today's Sabbath Sunday. So I thought that I would take the opportunity with this second Sabbath Sunday to answer some questions and some comments that I get on the YouTube channel and on Facebook. So if any of you want your question to be read, you can send me an email on Facebook. That's probably the best way is friend me on Facebook. Uh, go to Phoenix Longevity Arts Facebook page and like it. Send me an email on the Phoenix Longevity Arts Facebook page or um, send me an email to phoenixlongevityarts at gmail.com. But if you send a comment on the YouTube video, there's literally thousands of comments every day and I can't get to all of them. I really appreciate all the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can, but the best way to get me is phoenixlongevityarts at gmail or to email me as a friend on Facebook or email our Facebook group page at Phoenix Longevity Arts. You can also uh, sign up for my Twitter feed and it's at Kung Fu Universe. That's our name on Twitter. And of course, I'm trying to stay hydrated while I answer your guys' questions. So I have my glass of filtered water and uh, I'm going to add in to the water my uh, Bragg family raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar with the mother. And I'll add about this much. Somebody out there said that I was a wuss uh, before because we did a video on how to cure headaches through meditation. Check that video out and we did this drink. And apparently I didn't put as much apple cider vinegar in my drink as Dr. Oz did. So let's put a little more in and give Dr. Oz a run for his money. How's that? Is that a sufficient amount? <laughs> and what I'm also going to do to my drink is I'm going to add in some fresh organic lemon from my uh, mother-in-law's tree. So now I can sip this to your guys' health and my health and answer your questions. Wow. So the first question today was a recent question on Facebook and this is from uh, Pentoja de Sousa and he asked, do I have a Wing Shu DVD? And the answer is no. The DVDs that we have available right now are a Yang Family Tai Chi instructional DVD of the form. It's a, it's a two disc DVD and disc one shows the six different sections of Yang style Tai Chi that I teach and it shows each section and each movement eight different ways. So literally on the menu screen, on the Yang Tai Chi DVD, you can turn me forward or backward. You can shut me up and have music only. You can play it with in full instruction. You can play it with just the breathing. You can play the DVD with music only or with just the posture names from the front or the back. So it's a lot of material. It's got all 64 movements. Um, and it's got six different sections. That's the complete Yang style sequence. And then disc two is me performing the form in real time uh, so you can see how it should look when it's done for real. That's disc one we have available. And the second DVD we have available right now is the Iron Bone DVD, which is one disc, but it has over 20 different exercises for iron bone conditioning. It's very traditional iron bone. It uses makiwara boards and iron palm bags, tapping rods and uh, pipe rolls and it is designed to make not only your forearms and your shins much more uh, rock-like and iron-like, 
but at the same time, it also conditions the iron shirt, the ribs, the skin, the mental discipline, mental toughness, and it's supposed to bring a lot of good healing energy to the bones. Whether you're trying to get your bones stronger for martial arts, or if you're trying to just improve your bone density for general health, our Iron Bone DVD is for you. And right now we've finished filming. I'm just putting the final editing touches on our third DVD, which will be the Tai Chi Combat DVD. And it's gonna be a lot of material, it's very exciting. Um, my student Jokum, who you guys know from a lot of our videos, was kind enough to lend his body to us for the DVD. And uh, we beat the hell out of him for about uh, two days. So look for the Tai Chi Combat DVD to be coming out in about this time next month. The next question is also from Facebook. It's from Mr. Alton. And he asks, uh, could I explain why have so many different forms of Tai Chi Chuan? And uh, so I think he's asking why we teach so many different styles of Tai Chi. And I don't teach so many different styles. I mostly teach uh, about four different styles and there's an order to them. I teach the Yang style of Tai Chi first to beginners and to all my students. And then I go from Yang style Tai Chi to Chen style Tai Chi, which is much more challenging and difficult. From Chen style Tai Chi, we learn the 24 style of Tai Chi, which is kind of like a break. After 24 style Tai Chi, we actually go to Buddha Fist, which is a traditional style of Tai Chi from Wudong Mountain that apparently was the uh, inspiration for Tai Chi. From Buddha Fist, we go to Tai Chi Weapons and I teach Tai Chi Sword, Tai Chi Knife, Tai Chi Fan, and Tai Chi Spear. And we've also learned some Wu style Tai Chi, which we'll be releasing later. So that's the styles of Tai Chi that I teach. I don't teach the Sun style of Tai Chi or some of the others, but uh, I do teach the styles that I just mentioned. And we do many varieties of Qigong. In my school, I teach the eight brocades of Qigong. I teach the uh, Hua To five animal play Qigong. Hua To was a Chinese doctor who based his style of Qigong on the five animals, five organs, and five elements. And uh, tiger, bear, monkey, deer, and crane are the five animals and each animal uh, gets a color and a element. So for crane, we have the heart and we have fire. For bear, we have the liver and we have wood. For deer, we have metal and the lungs. For monkey, we have the stomach and we have the earth. And the last one is the tiger, which is the kidneys and water and we try to teach our students how to unify the organs, elements, and animals in order to improve your focus, mental discipline, and physical condition. After the five animal play, we do the 49 traditional uh, Yi Jin Jing postures that Damo brought from India to the Shaolin Temple. And so I think that different schools of yoga and Shaolin Kung Fu share a very similar ancestry, and that is India and yoga. So what do you think the Dhamma was bringing over from India to China to the Shaolin Temple? Those Yi Jin Jing postures were asanas, and it's what made the Shaolin monks gain their incredible health and strength. So those are the three main schools of Qigong that I teach. I also teach different Buddhist and Taoist breathing techniques, uh, sometimes called Ho Tian Chi and Xian Tian Qi, uh, and they're just different kinds of breath that help to benefit organs, mind, and body. So we'll be releasing all of these different styles of Qigong and meditation in addition to our Tai Chi. So I hope that answers your question. The next question is from Facebook as well, and it's from uh, Noble Nigel. And the first question he asks is, do I want to come to Singapore? And my answer is yes, I would love to come to Singapore. I've always wanted to go to uh, Xinjiapu or Singapore. And um, it's just a matter of time. So I would love to take a couple weeks and come there and see uh, what the country's all about. The other question that Noble had was, can you kindly make a video of Umbrella Kung Fu? And um, we kind of already have some of that on our channel because it's the, the Damo Fighting Cane. If you go to the Damo Fighting Cane instructional video, We'll be showing some more, uh, a whole series of cane and crutch fighting techniques. And when you train 
cane or crutch style kung fu, you can easily swap that out for an umbrella and use an umbrella and do the exact same techniques. Especially if the umbrella has a little hook on the bottom, it's identical to the cane, plus it has the added move of opening the umbrella up. So I would say that whenever we make videos of cane kung fu, that is umbrella kung fu. So hopefully that will help uh, Noble Nigel. The next question is also from Facebook and it's from, from Isaac Elrod and Isaac said, Hi, I'm 15 years old and love your boat staff spins and martial art, tai chi, kung fu, all that great stuff. Hey man, I'm trying to go into the chain whip and I have the ball on a rope, but how long should the whip be? And my answer to this question for Isaac is that when you're standing up and you have your arm bent at a 90 degree angle, so your forearm is flat to the ground or parallel to the ground, and you're holding the handle of the chain whip, the dart of the chain whip should kind of barely touch the ground at that point. So standing up position, arm at 90 degrees, holding the handle, the whip should be barely touching the ground. That's generally the length of the whip. But then once you get some skills with the chain whip, you can adjust it longer or shorter to fit your, uh, your, your liking. This uh, question is from Otto uh, uh, Dittmer. And Otto asks, hey Jake, really enjoy your videos. I'm a yoga and tai chi practitioner and instructor in Berkeley. Loved your whole space you have created as well. Do you take students in a residential format ever to come and train with you? It's a good question. Um, when I was learning most of my Kung Fu from a teenager um, through my 20s, now I'm in my 30s, I, that's how I did it. I actually went into uh, China, into different parts of the United States, and I actually just stayed with students of Chinese martial arts and would learn from different teachers as I was staying with those students and it enabled me to travel um, and save money and save costs. So yeah, I would say that if anybody ever wants to come out to Tempe or Phoenix, um, if not at my house, I'll definitely have a student or two who will probably volunteer a place to stay for a few days or a week or so if you um, need it and that will enable you to come out here and train with us I'm all for it so let me know if you ever want to come out and uh, give me some advance notice and I'll set you up the next question is from Adam and it came in through our Phoenix longevity arts at gmail email system and it says hi I saw one of your videos on YouTube and he put the link there and it says I used to train with someone years ago in Tucson uh, in about 2000 his name was James Byron Aston he called his practice Wu Chi Chuan or Wu Chi Xin Tao. He's in California now. After years of looking at local schools and videos on YouTube, you are the only person I've seen who moves like him. I wonder if you know him. Anyway, I plan to get a DVD or two from your website. Even from one video, I can tell that you're the real deal, which in my experience is very rare in the martial arts community, at least where I live. All the best, Adam. Thanks, Adam, so much. I appreciate the compliments and for watching. I don't know uh, James uh, Byron Aston, but um, I'll look up his website here and uh, I'll check him out. I hope that you had a great experience with him. And I'm always one to say to everybody who has different teachers in the martial arts that the most important thing to look for in finding a martial arts dojo, kun, or school is to judge the person who runs the classes. It doesn't matter if they teach Taekwondo, Karate, Kung Fu, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, doesn't matter what it is. You can have 10 different Jiu Jitsu teachers and have 10 different experiences because it's the teacher that makes the martial arts, the person. Um, and so I would definitely, before joining a martial arts school, always judge the teacher and figure out if your morals coincide with theirs and if you like their style and if you can, if you're going to be bettering yourself by being in that person's presence for years in the future because the martial arts is kind of culty and kind of family oriented sometimes, so it's important to find somebody who's going to make you a better person and not take advantage of you. So thanks for all the uh, viewership, Adam. The next question was from our Phoenix Longevity Arts at gmail.com email system, and it's from Justin. And Justin says, Hey, I'm an Iraqi war vet who was recently diagnosed with PTSD. I'm also a PhD student in Near Eastern Studies with limited resources. I'd like to chat with you sometime about Skype classes. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm not really that comfortable with big crowds quite yet. So not going to classes might be the best option for me. 
but I have heard that Kung Fu and Tai Chi are great for relaxation, etc. I have some martial arts training, but the majority of this was simply being trained by my father. Here's an odd question for you. Any chances of working via Skype for a lower cost as an example student? Thanks for your help. I'll be camping with my family over the next few days, but I look forward to your reply. Also, I will be in Sicily this summer, so I'm really looking forward to start in the fall, if at all possible. Justin. Hey, thanks Justin for the email. Um, yeah, Skype's a great way to connect, and um, we do lessons via Skype. We put a video on our YouTube channel about Skype lessons. Usually we just charge uh, $35 for a 30 minute Skype lesson, or you can do an hour for $50, so it's a little better deal. And in that hour or 30 minutes, we'll cover as much as you want on whatever uh, subject you would like. And so I know that uh, I've had some other military veterans that suffer with different ailments, not only PTSD, but also um, different things like they've gotten out of shape and they want to get back into military shape. That's what they always call it. And so um, that's really cool that you've been trained by your father. I wish, I think it's always cool and like movie style martial arts when your family trains you. It's kind of like the godfather being trained by your family. Um, so yeah, let me know. I'll send you an email back here. Uh, sorry for the delay in answering you back. But um, I think that would be great. And uh, I'll send you back an email about uh, possible times uh, we can set up a Skype meeting. It's getting kind of dark on me here, so I'm going to be uh, answering just one or two more and then I'm going to turn in for the night. The next question is through our uh, Phoenix Longevity Arts of Gmail email system. It's from Graham and it says, Hi Jake, I've been following with much interest your YouTube vi video series on Bagua Zhang. Uh, through to section 7 as well as your clips on 8 palms, reason, beginners, moves. Can you say when section 8 mentioned may be available on YouTube? Regards, Graham. Yes, I think we already put section 8 on YouTube and if we didn't, then I have it filmed and I just haven't uploaded it. So give me a, um, a night to check it out. I'll email you back and I'll let's see where it is. But if you guys can go to my YouTube channel for me right now and check it out, I'm pretty sure that I filmed uh, Bagua Zhang section 8 and this particular style of Bagua Zhang we've released on our channel first is called the traditional or classical style of Bagua Zhang and we'll be coming out with dragon Bagua Zhang and snake Bagua Zhang and Bagua two person fighting sets, Bagua eight animals, Bagua moon forks which I've really been delaying on the moon forks, we've uploaded a few sections of that already we'll be talking about Bagua straight sword and Bagua broadsword and different styles of Bagua. The Bagua Spear, the Bagua Staff, it's all coming soon. So please be patient. We're uploading everything in a certain sequence and order and um, I hope that you guys can have patience for the good stuff. This uh, next question comes from us uh, from the Phoenix Longevity Arts at Gmail email system and it is from Wesley and it says, Hello Sifu, I really enjoyed your video on the beginning spinning bow staff as well as the bow staff form number one for the student. Please send me a quote for the bow staff and please continue to show ideal workout for the staff. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for the email. And I think you put your name as Wesley, but also Sabonim. So um, I hope I said your name right. I don't sell bow staffs. I get my bow staffs. Uh, they're made out of rattan and I get them from a company in California called Cane and Basket Company. You can Google search them. Uh, they're under Canaan Basket Company and they sell incredible rattan bow staffs of different lengths. They ship all over the place. You can get them delivered right to your residence or your business. And we just cut them down to size. You traditionally would like to have a bow staff about two or so inches above your head. And yes, we have really had a lot of um, really good response to our bow staff series and bow staff instructional videos. And so I know you guys love them. We're gonna be coming out with more. We're actually doing two weapons DVDs as well. One instructional DVD on chain whip and one on the bow staff. So those are gonna be coming out in the next few months also. And uh, we'll be coming out with more bow staff training vids on our YouTube channel in the near future. Look out for our, uh, our weekend weapons segment every Saturday. This last Saturday segment was on throwing weapons and uh, coming up we'll have one on chain whip. And this is uh, the last question we'll uh, answer here tonight. It's from, uh, it's through our Phoenix Longevity Arts at Gmail email system. And it's from Alan. 
And Alan says, I love to watch you on YouTube. I'm 55 years old and I want to learn the bow staff and Bagua. Do you teach these by DVD? Let me know, please. Just need to get in shape and defend myself. I work by inspecting foreclosed homes in some bad parts of different cities. Thanks. All right, well, I think that for different students, they have different reasons for training the martial arts, and obviously yours is the self-defense reason and maybe even the health reason for getting in shape. I would say usually at my school, probably 80% of my students just want to use the martial arts to get in better shape and to gain uh, good levels of fitness. The other 20% also want to defend themselves and they want to have badass, traditional, historic, X-Men style martial art prowess. And so um, I would say that if you're interested in Bagua and the staff, um, take your staff out and just spin it every day. Doing spins one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. We'll come up with different spinning techniques coming up. The Bagua, start by learning section number one and the eight palms, and then just do the eight palms in section one every single day, at least once or twice. And maybe do your bow staff spins before and after your Bagua. And then if you can get a partner once in a while, go to our uh, YouTube uh, channel and type in the top eight Bagua uh, real fighting techniques and get with your partner and go over those eight techniques and that'll be the beginning of your fighting uh, applications of the Bagua movements and you'll be on your way to not only better fitness but also more confidence through the study of self-defense. Hey, it's getting super dark here and uh, I need to finish up my apple cider vinegar lemon water. And um, maybe uh, do some more uh, chores here before it gets too dark. I really hope you guys enjoyed this second Sabbath Sunday. Every Sabbath Sunday here, we're going to be answering questions. So if you, again, if you want to get in touch with me, Facebook me, please go to our Facebook group page, Phoenix Longevity Arts. It's our uh, school page. And also uh, follow me on Twitter at Kung Fu Universe. And uh, friend me on Facebook, Jake Mace at Facebook. And I really appreciate you guys watching our channels. I really uh, started the YouTube channel because of um, just wanted to kind of um, see what uploading a video of the martial arts was all about. And uh, then it became um, just kind of a way that I could communicate with some other instructors through private videos. And then it became a thing where people actually started watching a video. The very first video we uploaded, we actually thought people started to actually watch was one where I did the splits against a door frame and I put my leg vertical. People loved that video and watched it. And um, from there, it's only grown. So we uh, just today, we've hit 50,000 YouTube subscribers. And I think by the end of the next month, we'll be almost at 10 million total views. And because of you guys, we're being watched from all over the world. So if you're watching our video right now, you're part of a network of people that are interested in traditional martial arts. <laughs> not just in Kung Fu, but in all different styles of traditional arts. And I really hope you guys continue to enjoy our videos. You're welcome to hate on them and troll them. Um, and if you love the videos, give us a like button and leave a comment and share it. Being an active member of our channel helps us to reach more people. And I love getting video responses and seeing the positive comments. I read all the comments, but I especially like and pay attention to the positive ones because they make me feel the best. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy tomorrow's Meditation Monday video. And with that, I'll see you guys in the morning for a wonderful set of meditation to improve your entire week. This is Jake May signing off, and I'll see you guys next time.